by Fleetwood Mac. Six o'clock. GMT. Well, British summertime, actually. You wouldn't fucking know it. Am I right? <laughs> what a shitty day it's been, weather-wise. Hasn't been a great summer, has it, really? Um, my, uh, my sole achievement this weekend has been um, I ordered a new <laughs> wash bag, toiletry bag, for my tour that's starting tomorrow. Back up. Got halfway through before the pandemic. So 18 months off. Loads of warm-ups to keep it ticking over and changing. And then uh, uh, some sort of quite big socially distanced ones um, uh, since we come out of lockdown. So uh, I'm firing on all cylinders. And this is the first full capacity non-socially distanced gig tomorrow. At Tunbridge Wells. Then Manchester. Then Leeds Arena. So, fifth gig back, 12,000 people. Welcome. Um, where are you watching from? Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, I thought, uh, <laughs> what was it, a wash bag? Well, I say I, Jane did. I found it and she had to order it online for me because I, <laughs> I don't trust it. <laughs> and it came today. Lovely. Lots of little pockets. I've already filled it. You got your, you know, your toothbrushes and your one, one toothbrush. I don't get through two toothbrushes. Um, I like to clean my teeth, not that much. Three times a day. Thanks for asking. Uh, little bits and pieces, plasters, in case I get a bunion. <laughs> Stuff like that. So that's it. Oh, I did, um, did record another absolutely uh, mental with Sam Harris yesterday. And uh, I think that's nine of the 10 we're gonna do. We did 11 last time, but they were only like 35, 40 minutes. And these are like 40, 50 minutes. So we do 10 of those and that's like, that's a lot longer. So it's more value for money. And thank you to everyone uh, who bought the first series. It's been, it's been amazing. Uh, it, it's, you made it number one around the world, so thank you. Uh, and of all the hundreds of thousands of people that bought it and loved it, there's always a couple on Twitter that go, why isn't this free? Well, because it isn't. Someone said to me, uh, why do I have to pay for this? I said, you don't. You don't have to do anything. You can buy some out. Do, the, do those people go in shops and go, why, why are you charging for this shit? It should be free. I think people think the inter they've heard the internet should be free. We're, it's not. Also, people say to me, oh, you, aren't, aren't you rich enough? You could do a free one. I did 150 fucking free ones. <laughs> See, they're not even fans. Oh, they know that. They'd know that. They that they wouldn't they wouldn't listen they wouldn't like it. They just they just want to be heard. They just want to do some up online. But um and it's not free. We had to build a website. I mean that costs a lot and maintain it because we're we're doing it all ourselves. It's like we've built a fucking shop, right? And that that costs money. Um also, they say things like, oh, why are you just getting sponsored? Well, then I'll be beholden to a sponsor. And I won't be able to slag them off and say what I mean. Or do adverts. Adverts are fucking annoying. And also, again, um, so this way, uh, you know, we can say anything we want. It's truly, true freedom. And it costs 10 quid. Or is it $15? 11 quid. 11 quid for six or seven hours. The new one would be like seven or eight hours. You know, that's like three movies. It's, oh, so annoying. Also, also, right, because me and Sam pay our taxes, I'm like some fucking celebrities and, well, lots of people, right? Rich people. We pay our taxes. So if you spend, 
11 quid or whatever it is on this, about five of that goes straight to the inland revenue for me. So it goes to good causes. I'm helping pay for schools and the National Health Service and stuff. Also, any money I've got left over, you know, I said I haven't got, I can't take it with me. I haven't got useless kids sitting around taking smack waiting for me to die. So they're not going to get it. So it probably go to animals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, there you go. Don't get me started on celebrity children. <laughs> so, yeah. Buy absolutely mental. It's great value for money. Hours and hours of chat and self-help. Right, for a few quid, I pay my taxes, I give to animal charities, no adverts, no sponsors. <laughs> it turned out like an advert for it. Me getting annoyed by one person on Twitter going, why do I have to pay for this? <laughs> anyway, right, got some questions from you bunch of idiots. Uh, um... Someone just said fangy teeth. <laughs> Amazing podcast. Thank you. I know all you lot bought it. You tune in every day. You, you, you appreciate my 150 free <laughs> half hours of pure bollocks. How's the back? Yeah, getting better. I played tennis Friday. I was very careful. I had a weightlifter's belt on. And um, my opponent, who's my sort of trainer, who was a tennis coach as well, um, we always have close games, uh, and uh, but I only allowed him one serve because the first serve I can't die for it, so that got the game going. So he's only allowed one serve, and uh, we had a good game. I still I still lost, but it was close. I let drop shots go, <laughs> right? But you know, um, I took a few games just uh, just playing sort of carefully and keeping it deep. I was just thinking I mustn't I mustn't slip or fall over or put my back out. Um and I'm so competitive it's really hard for me to let a shot go. I think oh I mustn't do that. But I think well I just maybe I could just get it and not break my back. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, it's uh getting good. And I'm gonna I've decided to just do lots of rehab on it. Uh, when it gets usually when it gets better I just forget and do it again like a year later. So I'm going to do rehab and, uh, you know, do little, little special exercises and yoga or something. I say that now. I intend to. Uh, but, uh, so it's just like an old car. Just going to run it into the ground. Then when it can't move anymore, I just say, Jay, take me to the scrapyard. Uh, we talk a lot about that on the Sam Harris and me podcast. About what our body's for, what our mind's for. And now, uh, usually comes back to me ending up in a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> right. Leopold and Love Day. This is Pickle's first International Cat Day. What did you do to celebrate? She likes a routine. Same, same every day. You could, you could, you know, set your clocks by it. She gets up, 5.30. Uh... She has a breakfast, sits on the back of the couch. She has a she has a little um, uh, playtime when I get up. The taco comes out. Uh, they're set. They're set little routines. And then she's got her tunnel out. And then uh, uh, after her tea. So, uh, yeah. Um, same as ever. And there's adding more. They add more to it, which gets gets a new thing or, you know. A new little routine. Uh, Claire, how excited are you about going back on tour? How's the wash bag? <laughs> Packing coming on. Yeah, so I'd already packed it. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. Uh, um, it's been a weird year, obviously, for everyone. And that, just, that, 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 um, as I say, I was halfway round. I'd done arenas around Europe already. And it just stopped. The last one was, Stockholm, 
a 10,000 seater in Stockholm, I think, uh, end of February, and then it just stopped, and, all, and it was all postponed. So you have a year of going, is this material still relevant? The world's changing. I've got to change that. I've got to change that. What do I talk about? Um, and, uh, and then you go, you know what? People are happy to be there. You put lots of work into it. It's really, I think it's really good. Some people complain. I know what they complain about as well. I know I can see it. I can see it. Even though built in with the routines, you know, it's taken out of context. Like often I see a complaint. Uh, oh, he said this and that. I go, yeah, but you haven't you haven't done the first minute when I explain what I'm going to do, and then the minute after that where I undermine it all. So you can't worry about that because I think it's willful. Now some people are stupid and don't get it when you talk about taboo subjects, or you know they don't get it. But some people do get it, and they pretend not to. They willfully do a horrible headline because it's clickbait, and people don't read the article. Even if they explain the joke in the article, which they shouldn't fucking do, don't fucking print jokes. Why do people think it's okay to print jokes? You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't do a, a review of the Sixth Sense and say Bruce Willis was brilliant as the ghost. What what about fucking spoiler alert, dude? <laughs> it's not fair, is it? It's not fair. So, apart from all that. And I never complained about the audiences. The audiences are great. I played to 800,000 people on Humanity, not one, everyone, everyone laughing all the time. As soon as it goes on Netflix and then a little bit goes on YouTube, someone goes, oh, this is not on. You weren't there, mate. You don't, you, you don't know, you weren't there. You're not a fan. I could give a fuck about your opinion. Um, so I, you know, I, uh, I, I, I do it, I do it for me. <laughs> And people who come along and enjoy it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, Titch, which children's book would you like to wake up in and experience? Mama's would be Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, that's tough, isn't it? I always liked, I think my favourite kids book growing up was things like um, Robinson Crusoe and those adventure things like Robinson Crusoe, you know, uh, Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Friend that I, I, I love. But then I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be in it, would I? I wouldn't want to be <laughs> on my own on a desert island. Um, but if it, I, I, that's what I like. I like those adventures. Oh, I will tell you one that I really liked. It wasn't a kid's book. It was a TV show. But uh, Mr. Ben, I think I'm a good Mr. Ben. Just a normal bloke who just goes into a shop, puts on a suit of armour, and soon he's <laughs> fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ben, yeah, I'd be a good Mr. Ben, I reckon. So I play him a little bit grumpy, get annoyed. I could do it in a change history. I could do the wrong thing. Just a troll. <laughs> uh, Leslie, looking forward to Supernature at Manchester 02. Yeah, can't wait. Next week. Do you still get pre-gig butterflies? What is it about stand-up that you actually love so much? What did you pack in that wash bag? <laughs> uh, what do I look? I, I, yeah, I, I get, um, they're not butterflies, they're excitement. It's not butterflies like, oh God. With all those issues, will it be taken out of context and all that? It will. So there's nothing you can do about it. It's like saying, will it rain this year? Oh, it will. It just will. Take an umbrella. Um, so... Uh, no, I don't worry like, oh, oh, how am I funny with a laugh? Because by the time it gets to these things, they have been, I know it's the same. It's going to happen. They laugh the night before, they're going to laugh tonight. Um, and even in warm-ups, when you worry about it, it's about the event. They know it's new material. Uh, in fact, I, I, I sometimes like the warm-ups more than the real thing because 
you know, you don't know the reaction and they're, they're grateful to, even if it's rubbish and I go, that was shit, that won't get in. They like that because they know they've seen someone that no one else will see. So they like, they like that experience. And then by the time I charge full price, it flies. It's, it's the, you know, uh, so I don't get that sort of nerves. Um, uh, I do worry, will my back go? <laughs> <laughs> that shouldn't be a concern, should it? For a stand up, with his back go, will he be carried off stage in the stretcher? <laughs> um, uh, what is it about stand up you love so much? More and more, the audience, I, uh, more and more. I, I, you know, I appreciate, I, I know I've put the work in now. I really, I, I you know, I, I work it now and I love that. Um, and uh, I appreciate, I, I, I think of every single one, particularly because of the pandemic and having to postpone it. I, and also on Twitter where I speak to people, individuals, I think every one of those people spent a lot of money on that ticket. And uh, they might be having a really bad day as well. They're not going to not go to a gig they paid under a quid for. So they might be having a really bad day. And they might have had an argument. They might have, you know, had to get a babysitter, had to get parking. You know, they, they've they gone through a lot to get that there for me to muck around for 75 minutes. So it better be good. And uh, I, I really appreciate the audience. They, they've given me this, this, you know, this lifestyle. They've, they've allowed me to do what I want every day. So um, that's the best thing about stand-up, that I do what I want. I, I'm not beholden to anyone. Um, so I only care about, uh, you know, the audience and my back. <laughs> uh, Welsh Felix. If you could make humans behave like dogs or dogs behave like humans, which would you choose? Well, I wouldn't want to change dogs. They're perfect. So it's got to be humans behave like dogs. But what do you mean by that? See, you, you could mean oh, all humans are lovely to each other and interested and they've got such big hearts and they do anything for you and they guard you and guide you, protect you, smell if you've got cancer, do anything for you all their life. Or you could mean, do humans go around shitting on the pavement and biting you? So, <laughs> if it's the first one, then, yeah, we could all learn a lesson from dogs. You know? Dogs. They're just... They're magical. So, uh, they're better than people. So it's got to be that one. Um, Philly Annie, if you could save a prop from any of your favourite movies or TV shows, what would you take? Have you saved any particular item from your series? Uh, yeah, I don't take much. I sometimes take, like, an iconic bit of outfit. And then that gets sort of whittled away. Uh, I sometimes, you know, I've got a few bits, but then I sometimes give things to charity. Um, sometimes I wear them. So I'll, I'll wear the jeans I wore in Afterlife, and then um, I've got the uh, I've got the bell from the office reception. I, I keep I always keep the the clapperboard. I've got I've got the clapperboard from every show I've ever done, um, from the office to three from Afterlife. So I always keep that. Uh, what would I take from someone else's series? Oh, what would that be? Um, oh, blimey. Uh, I watch a lot of things like, 
I watch ordinary things, so there's been nothing special, sort of everyday life sort of things. Um, so it probably something like something from Vikings or a longboat from Vikings. <laughs> That'd be great. Going up and down the Thames in a longboat. That'd be brilliant. Uh, yeah, that'd be good. I love longboats. I think they're amazing. Incredible. Uh, Joey. You must incorporate one of the following dog traits into your personality. Stop to sniff every lamppost, tree, bush, etc. on your walks to check the wee mail. <laughs> Greet people by sniffing their bottom. Well, that's out, isn't it? I'll get beaten up. so And I wouldn't want to do it anyway. Doing something I don't want to do and getting punched in the face for it. So that's out. Pick up any interesting looking objects such as shoes, socks, sticks with your mouth and carry them around. It would have been that one if I could just... Well, I can't do that because I'm a back. So it's got to be stop to sniff every lamppost. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't have to bend down, I'll just sniff them at head height. You idiot. Um, Andy, out of all the people you have worked with, who were you most surprised by when they said they would be in one of your shows? Oh... Well, the first thing springs to mind is is extras because because they were big big stars. Uh, I don't think it surprised me, and again, that wasn't a surprise because usually I sort of I already knew them or I'd work with them on something else and asked them. Like Robert De Niro, for example, I took the movie, I took a little part in the movie. Stardust just to meet him to get him extras. So, <laughs> uh, so if I didn't know any of them and I'd have cold, called them up cold and they'd have said yes, the most surprising one would have been David Bowie because he just didn't do that sort of thing. I think that was the last show he did and introducing me on stage in Madison Square Garden was his li last live performance. Um, so that is, that's surprising when you do know him. Uh, so, yeah, I think David Bowie being in a little British sitcom um, when I asked him uh, is st still pretty amazing, actually. Uh, Julia, what is your favourite museum or art gallery in the world? Oh, first one that sprang to mind was the Frick. I like that. That's where that's near where we we live in New York, and that's lovely. It's just beautiful and peaceful and interesting. And uh, uh, museum uh, um, art gallery. Uh, Chicago Art Gallery is amazing. I suppose the big ones are amazing because they've got the... But then there's lovely little little ones here, like there's, you know, a couple of amazing paintings in uh, the Kenwood and the Courthold, and there's little, uh, tiny little collections where you see Van Gogh and Rembrandt and Constable. And, uh, so it depends, but um, uh, I think the Frick... The frick's good for lots of reasons, and it's you know in New York, and um, yeah, it's great. But there are so many amazing ones. I, uh, when I was uh, old enough to first go up in, into town by myself uh, on the bus, I, I don't know, how old would I have been? 12, 13, 14. Uh, I was low on the bus, right? No money, I had no money. Mum would give me the bus fare, so. I couldn't do it. I couldn't buy anything. So I used to go to uh, the museum in Reading and uh, I didn't have... <laughs> it didn't have a lot. I remember it had some Roman coins. Right. Well, that at 12, I was just looking at Roman coins. And they're old. People just found them. Right. And I remember there was 
a little vivarium that had a toad in it, just a common toad. I couldn't, they could have got it from the garden, you know. And I used to just look at this toad. And that was it. <laughs> My only friend was a fucking toad. And that gave me the idea to do it myself. And I made my own vivarium uh, uh, out of um, window panes and I'd build it and I got a little toad in there and I used to feed him every day with a little woodlouse or cheese log, as we call them in Reading. Um, and uh, yeah, you can find something. And um, I, I, you know, as I said before, the best things in life really are free. Uh, my, my love of nature and I, that gave me an idea to, you know, give you a hobby and uh, it was nice, just nice. Um, so uh, I, I love museums and art galleries. I absolutely love them. I think they're magical places. Uh, love all that shit we've stolen from around the world. <laughs> Going to a bank robber's house, isn't it? In Marbella. You know, I've got that one. I said, go and watch what I got there. Yeah, that's all the money I got from the. Uh... It's like you go around the British Museum, we go, we nicked that from uh, Egypt. <laughs> it's some of the gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh... <laughs> Gunner, know thyself is an ancient concept going back further than Socrates and is the root of much philosophy. With that in mind, what are the things important? What are the most important things to learn about oneself? Or is all self-knowledge equal? Gunner, you get heavy, don't you? Uh, well, I think you want to know you're a good person, don't you? Although if you're not a good person, you don't care, do you, I suppose? So uh, I think you want to know that you've lived a good life. You don't want to think, oh, what a waste of a life. So you want to do some of... And then you find out what that is, whether it's creativity or leaving the world a better place than you found it or helping others. So I suppose you want to learn if you're a good person and therefore you've lived a good life. Uh, I think you want to know that you can be proud of yourself for certain things. Um, I suppose courage, you want to know, because we never know how we'll act when we need to, do we? You know, would, would you confront, would you help someone else if they were being attacked by someone, you know? Would you, would you give up your lifeboat seat to someone? Would you, you know, all those things, you wonder... And no, I I fight for that life. <laughs> <laughs> fucking knocking old people out of the way. My fucking mate, but you'll be no good on a fucking desert island. I've seen Robinson Crusoe. <laughs> uh, so I suppose you want you want to know if you're a good, courageous, and I mean courage in I don't mean. You're the, 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 the artist bloke in Whitley. I mean, you know, courage of your convictions. Brave, standing up for others, telling the truth, even though it's, you know, might not be good for you. Integrity, doing some of the, uh, it's the right thing to do, even though it might not be the best thing for you. So you want to know that about yourself, I think. But it all comes down to, you know, when it comes to it, can you can you sleep at night? Did you do the right thing? And no one's perfect. You'd have to do, you know, you'd have to have a, you know, a complete track with the greatest person in the world. But on balance, in general, if there was a God, would he go, oh, you're, yeah, you, you're way, you're brilliant. You've done really well. I suppose you want to know that uh, you get in. Um, but there isn't. So just be nice anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Freya if you had a time machine what event would you go back to watch oh oh that's tough isn't it 
I mean, all those things shooting through your mind. We probably wouldn't have to do it in your lifetime, would you? Because you've, you've watched it on telly. You want something that wasn't documented. It? Nothing too dead. You don't want to go back too far. But yeah. Got eaten by a T-Rex day one. Just smashed the time machine. Ah, fucked. Smack. Uh, then you get. I, I don't. What if you go back and you get a toothache and you have to go to the dentist in 1943? And he. You go, can I have some. Uh, and they go, what? You know, the. What is it? I don't know. But in the future, we've got the. So you don't feel a fucking thing. <laughs> Uh, what do I see? I don't really care about, you know, all the big political speeches and all that. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> I'd heckle. Um, oh, God. What would I say? Uh, Someone discovering someone, just a scientist going, just see there when he goes, like that. I go, what have you done? He goes, oh. <laughs> yeah, I think the scientific breakthrough. What did they do? What did they think? Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Be on the beagle. Um, he's, he's collecting beetles and finches. I mean, don't kill them. Fuck's sake. Uh, that's a tough one, that, isn't it? Because I'm a coward. Uh, Bella. Right, last one. Oh, look, we've gone over. If Jane was to have you stuffed, in brackets, after your death, Thanks for clarifying that one, Bella. <laughs> what pose would you want to be in? Uh, and where would you be? Here are uh, some options if you need help. Swearing at noisy pedestrians from your front window like that. Yeah, that's good. In the bath. That's good, but it's like, it's a bit of a waste, isn't it? Is, is this on display somewhere? It'd be weird, wouldn't it? In the garden to be used to scare people. So that's useful. That's good. They put correct. That's my boyfriend. It's just um, on wheels, so Jane can take you out and walk and meet dogs. Again, that'd be a bit weird, wouldn't it? <laughs> Jane will be committed. My dead boyfriend. <laughs> Scarecrow. Good. Sort of back to nature. Um. Like, so soon I'd just sort of crumble, wouldn't I, with all the worms and stuff and uh, But yeah. Uh, fucking now. That's worse than ending up in a bucket. Um, well, that was an absolute load of bollocks, wasn't it? But it was nice to get together again. Eyes are stinging. Bubble bath. Couldn't have a bath for a week because I thought I'd never get out again, which is annoying. So it's, it's good to be back because um, I'm a bad back. Not, I just like I sat in the bath and just decided I'm never getting out. So I was going, What are you doing? Like, I've decided I'm never getting out. I meant because my bad back, it was too dangerous. Just a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Just retweet it now. So you all watch it. Just that, you know, 200,000 people watch these over the next thousand retweets. Doesn't make sense. Just fucking retweet it now. Um, thanks for tuning in. I'm back on tour. Afterlife 3 is the best thing I've done. Halfway through, nearly finished. Absolutely mental. Nearly finished season 2 by season 1. This was free. Buy something. Um, be nice to animals. Tell you bye, everyone. Tell you bye.